everybody. This is Michelle from Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. I have a design team project for you and I'm super excited to share with you how I did it. I was asked by Ruth of Scrapbookers from Country Craft Creations. That is our Facebook group and um, we have an amazing time. If you join, I'll put the link down below. If you go and check it out and join our Facebook group, if you haven't already done that, you're going to get all kinds of information. You're going to get you know, first uh, information about retreats, virtual retreats, special projects that we've got going on, and you're going to get access to all the information for all the tutorials that all of our designers do, and it's just absolutely a treasure trove of awesomeness. So uh, please do check it out if you haven't already. Um, but anyways, I digress. Ruth uh, had asked me if I could try and figure this out. So I did, and it's amazing. And what we're going to be making is kind of a photo uh, cube. And this is an interactive thing. It's really fun. Um, I've even had one of um, the gals say that it looked like a kind of a fidget toy. And you know what? It could be. It totally could be. So uh, before I get into the tutorial, I just want to explain a few things. So I know you saw the video kind of at the beginning, so you know how this kind of works. I'm going to go through it again. Um, you're probably wondering why I have three of them right now. Well, because um, this first one I made and I loved it, but I wanted to try a different approach to doing it. So I made this one and then I decided to do a tutorial. So I made this one during the tutorial and guess what? That tutorial didn't work. I don't know what I did. It started off fine and then it went into like slow-mo and it, I could not get it fixed and it was just awful. Um, I got the actual speed of the video, but then there was this flickering. I could not get it fixed no matter what I did, no matter how many apps I downloaded, it did not work. So I have to redo the whole thing. So <laughs> there's that. So that's why we're here tonight. We're going to make number four. So four times a charm for me, I guess this time. So let's get to the tutorial. Let's talk about this. Um, this is a really cool project. So this is the first one I made. I used Love You Forever, which is a great paper collection from Country Craft Creations. Then I used Boho Baby, which is a collection by Echo Park that I had leftovers for, and I used it to make this version of it. And then I used um, Prima's Luna, which I bought from Country Craft Creations to create this one. And this was the one that I made for the tutorial. Tonight, what we're going to use is By the Seaside, which is a Country Craft Creations collection. And so I think you're going to like that one too. Now, this is meant to actually put photos on the box, but I don't have the photos, so I'm using the pattern paper. But you can obviously use the pattern paper as well because it makes a great display project for those. And you can mix and match. You can use some pattern paper and then use some photos. So you're going to see how that works when we get to this. Um, on this one here, this is the first one I attempted, and it worked, and it worked great. The one thing that I did not like about this, and I don't know if you can see it, but as you use your pattern papers, if you put it across the folds of this project, over time it's going to get worn. And so I thought, well, if you're going to do photos, then that's probably not a good idea. So I'm going to show you how to cut your papers or your photos, whichever you're using, so that you won't have that worn um, thing. So you can see in this one, I have cut the papers so that as this object gets moved around a lot you won't have a worn line through your photos um, this one here I decided to um, kind of hold together with a ribbon and um, it works great so if you want on any of these projects you can put it on an easel you can display it you can display it this side you can display it this side um, and then you can take it down and then see all the interactions inside of this and I'll show you that in a second and that worked really well so then I made the second one on this one other than, well, there's, there's two things I did different. So I did do the cuts through the cubes, um, through the papers so that you wouldn't get that worn piece. You do have a cut line, but you're not going to have the worn look, which I didn't want. But I also created a box that I'm going to show you how to make to kind of hold it all together. So you can do like a belly band kind of thing with the ribbon, or you can do the box. So I'm going to show you how to do the box. And then I did that for this tutorial, and then I came up with yet another little variation that you could use. So I guess it's a good thing that I have to redo this. Yeah, I guess it is because I came up with a good idea. So we're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you all of this stuff. But the fun part is, and as you saw in the beginning, so it 
folds in multiple different directions. It makes a pyramid shape. You can take that pyramid shape and move it around. Um, you can make it into a triangle shape and have your photos on like that. Um, when you turn it over, uh, on this one, I used four different pictures, excuse me. Um, on this one, I did one whole picture that I cut apart, but then as you fold this one, it turns into a cube shape, which is pretty cool. And then it turns like so, and you make it into another cube shape, and it just, I just think this project is really, really cool. You can open it like this, you can open it like this, you can turn it into, you know, the triangle, two different directions um, on the front. So you can open it like that. You can open it like this. And you have lots of opportunities to place your photos. And it just is very cool. And then, like I said, we are going, I'm going to show you how to make the tray to put everything together. Okay. So we'll, I show you that one. Let me show you this one real quick. So this one is again, the Boho baby collection. I had some extras. So I made this one and on this one, on the insides, I used the three by four cut aparts and that turned out pretty cool. And then when you, um, fold it into the cube, look how cute that is. I mean, is that not adorable? And this would give, like, my grandkids, when they see this, they're going to go crazy. They're going to think this is the coolest thing ever and trying to figure out how this works. I just think this is so much fun. Here's the back. And again, I use the four pictures. And, you know, just adorable. Just adorable. This is really fun. Um, this one here. So I used, again, Love You Forever by Country Craft Creations. And again, it just, you know, folds into all kinds of different configurations all of them will do this kind of uh, rotation which is really cool okay so you just kind of keep rotating it around so you can see all the different pictures and you can see why I use this paper collection when I tried it the first time because it just had so many beautiful images um, on it and then back here and then again you can fold it whoop, and then there's the pyramid shape if you fold it like this you get the cube shape it's just really fun to play with so it's really hard you have to play with it to kind of really get the the gist of how this works so once you make this um, do play with it and um, you'll figure it out it's just it's really really fun so let's get to the tutorial and like I said we are going to be using um, by the seaside which is a beautiful beach themed collection what we are going to need to do first is make eight of these triangle shapes and the other thing that you will need is some packing tape I'm using this packing tape that is nice and um, clear and it's nice and strong don't use your cellophane tape that's little here you want something that has a little bit bigger um, area you want something that's going to be a little bit stronger so just get some regular old packing tape you'll need that and then we need to make eight of these triangles and each of these are they're super simple to make um, they just take a little time because you do have to make eight of them um, so for that what you're going to need are some papers and did I not cut I didn't so let me real quick grab a piece of scratch paper and I'll show you how to cut the triangles that you are going to need for these. You are going to need 16 of them in order to make this project. So let me real quick cut a six by six square of paper so you can see. I thought I had prepped everything, but apparently I didn't. Um, like I said, this is the second time I've done the tutorial <laughs> and yeah I'm I, I, I can't believe it that tutorial turned out so good too but I just couldn't fix it all right so you will need for these triangles here you will need two pieces that are six by six and all you're going to do is put them in your cutter and you're going to cut them on the diagonal to make eight triangles per square so you'll cut it in half and then you'll take each of these halves and you're going to cut them Again, so now you should have, you know, this half cut into two. So you're going to do it to all of these pieces. And then you'll cut it in half again. All right. And that will give you four of those triangles 
from that half square. And you just keep doing that till you have 16 triangles. So you just need two six by six pieces of paper to do that, okay? So if I cut this triangle the same way, I'm gonna have eight pieces. So that's why you only need two six by six, okay? So once you do that, you need 16 of those. Then you're also going to need uh, strips of paper. And these strips, let me get my notes so I can see them nicely. Um, they are two and a half by 10 and three quarters. You will need eight of these, two and a half by 10 and three quarters. And each of these pieces you will need to put your in your scoreboard and grab your bone folder. And you're going to score on the two and a half, you're going to score at half. Ooh, I didn't do that very well, did I? Let me try that again. Half and at two, okay? Half and at two. And then you're gonna turn it and you're going to score it at three, six, and ten and a quarter. Okay, that's all you're going to do. So eight of these pieces right there. Then that's all the scoring you're going to need to do. Um, we're going to fold and burnish. So for each triangle, you will need one strip and you will need two triangles. All right. Um, I have made, I, I, so I have to tell you the other part of this story while I fold and burnish. So when um, Ruth asked me if I could figure this out, I tried and I came up with the most complicated, convoluted way of making these triangles that you could possibly imagine. And I thought there's no way this isn't gonna work. So I kind of like told her, I don't know if I can do this. And I put it off to the side and it's been off to the side for several weeks. Um, and then one morning, not too long ago, I got an aha moment and I, had this idea on how to make the triangles this way and it worked out absolutely perfectly so um that's where all of this came from now in this tutorial i'm using craft artisan cardstock in the other um project here that i did this one and on this one i used 100 pound um, artisan cardstock in white and i have used it all up making this so I had enough to do the tutorial and then the tutorial got screwed up so you know there it is but um, that all being said with the craft it's gonna work out just fine once you get everything folded and burnished then we're gonna make some miters and don't go too crazy with your miters okay we are going to adjust these uh, as we make this triangle piece okay because we need them perfect so I'm just gonna start the miters um, I'm folding these so that they're easier to do like so um it's just kind of instead of making two cuts i'm just making one and i'm just mitering both of them at the same time because everything needs a tab okay then when i get to here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut these out and i'm going to leave you know quite a bit on this tab because that's what's going to put the triangle together basically and so i don't want to miter it too much i want to make sure i have enough surface area for that so don't miter don't go crazy with the miters like i said we're going to fix the rest of them in just a minute okay so once you have it looking like this then you're going to need to glue this tab right here and we're going to glue it to the inside i don't want you to glue it to the outside because we're trying to keep the outside as um, nice and clean and flush as we possibly can okay so what we're going to do is um, there's I tried a couple different ways now remember this isn't a square so you can't fold it flat when you do it um, I've done them like this where I've just glued them together and I you know kind of hold the sides together make sure everything's nice and flush and then glue it together or if it's easier for you you can put the glue down and then use your table to help steady you and um, do it that way okay so whichever way is more comfortable you have eight triangles to make so you can try which one you know kind of works best for you and now my glue is going to be clogged up so hang on just a second let me grab my wipe here and I was just talking about my little glue dispenser, how it hardly ever clogs up. And, you know, I swear every time I get on video, it clogs up. So, there's that. All right, so a little bit of glue. And then, however you want to do it, I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to match the edges. Make sure the sides are matching. The scores are matching. Everything's nice and flush. 
Okay, and I'm going to press that down and then just make sure that you don't glue your triangle, you know, the walls to each other. So make sure it's a nice triangle shape. Okay, and then you can even just burnish that a little bit with your bone folder. Just make sure you don't fold anything. Don't add any more creases. So now you should have something that looks like this. What I ended up doing was kind of bending back the bottoms of my triangles so I could kind of look at these two pieces. Now you see how these edges are kind of going over the bottom of that triangle. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and I'm going to cut off enough to kind of make it so it's flat. Okay. So I hope you can see that. So it doesn't have to be perfectly flat to the edge, but you just need to cut off a little bit more. It's hard to judge in the other form when it's nice and flat. So I just found that this was the easiest way to just kind of make sure that that was good. Okay, so we'll do that to both sides. So again, fold that back. We're going to cut this off. We're going to just cut off just a little bit just to make it a little bit more flat so that it will fit at the bottom. Okay, do that to the top. And this one didn't need that much. So we're just going to cut that off. Okay, so it's nice and flush. And then when you fold the bottoms up, you might need to cut these as well, okay? Because you can see how they're hanging over the edge there. So again, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut a little bit more and just make sure that when we fold that, there's nothing hanging over the edge, okay? So we'll do that to all the sides. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball again, cut a little bit more off, and then you can see how that's gonna fold nice, okay? Do that to the other side so they're hanging off the edge. We don't want that. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off, a little bit more of a miter. Ah, like that. And then like this. Okay. All right, so like that. All right, so that's all the trimming that we have to do. And then, oh, I just <laughs> I just threw all those things right on the floor next to the garbage can. Oh my God. Okay. So now what we're going to do is glue this thing together. All right. So I'm going to bend this back so you can see, I'm going to put a little bit of glue under here and I'm kind of getting like both of the edges here on the tabs. You see that? And then I'm going to do that on this edge and then try and do that kind of triangle right there. Okay. This is the tricky part of the whole thing. I think this is the hardest part. Um, so we're trying to make the triangle shape, okay? But then you, what you need to do is turn it over once you do that and kind of make sure everything's kind of pressed down as much as you can So because you can't mash on this either because you'll squish it, which I've done. And yeah, I did do. <laughs> I squished one completely because um, I got a little too carried away with my squishing. And then I'm just taking my finger and I'm just going in there and just kind of you know, pressing down where I glued those two together, you're going to get glue all over your fingers. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of glue that seeps out. Just kind of gently wipe that up. This is going to be covered completely with the triangles that we made. You see how pretty that looks and how nice and smooth those edges are. So um, that's how you do that. And then you turn it over and we're going to repeat that process. Okay. So I'm going to put a little glue here on that edge and then I'm gonna put one on that edge down here on this edge and then try and get that like kind of triangle piece that's gonna cover that. Okay, and I'm gonna press that down. Try to make sure everything's nice and not square, but triangled, okay, and together. And then I'm gonna stick my finger in there and I'm gonna try and go on those joints where they're joined and press that down. When I did all of my, um, all of the boxes that I've made so far, um, and then art glitter glue does give you a little room. So if you didn't quite get it square, you'll know it when you turn it over and look, just try it again, okay? You wanna make sure these try to get as, as, as triangle as possible. I, want, I keep wanting to say square, they're not squares, but you wanna make sure that everything is kind of as lined up in a triangle shape as you possibly can. Um, as I was doing these, what I did was I did the triangle pieces with the sides here, and then I set it off to the side and made the next one and made the next one, and I kind of kept them in order. And then I went back to the first one, and by that time, this was all nice and dry. 
Um, and then I started putting my triangles on. So it was a good way to kind of do an assembly line. I did that while I was watching a TV show. And once you get the hang of it, you kind of can do it without thinking about it. It's really awesome. All right. So these triangles are going to get glued one on each side on the the triangles okay so you just grab your glue and then um they're gonna go right to the edge so i'm gonna try and put the glue right to the edge as much as i can and all over these half inch tabs okay then i'm gonna put my triangle on and make sure that it's nice and nice and lined up on that triangle and then I'm going to real gently, because like I said, you, you can't mash on it. You can't mash on it because um, you'll squish your triangle and then you have to start all over again. Um, but be very gentle. Use your fingers. Kind of go around the edges. You'll be surprised, especially if you're using artisan cardstock, how sturdy this structure is. Um, it really will hold up to a little bit of, you know, finger pressing. So um, I just go around. I'm trying to make sure you know, that my points are nice. I'm not rubbing against the points. I'm going with the points so that I don't like flip them up, I'm trying to spread the glue nice and gentle. All right. And you're going to get a structure that looks like that. Then you can go around like with your fingers. You can also do that. Just kind of press it down. Okay. And then um, on the one side, on the first side, you can actually go in with your finger and kind of go around. Now you can't do that on the second part because there's no nowhere to stick your finger in there once we cover it up, but you can do that, okay? So second one, we're gonna do that and we're going to put our glue down. Now these don't have to be like completely like perfect, perfect. If yours is a little teeny tiny bit off, it's okay. Don't worry about it, but try and get it as nice and triangle as possible. Um, and I'm going to lay that down. Sometimes um, you can also like lay it down on the table um, so that you have a little bit of, um, you know, um, oh, what's the word? Stability on the bottom when you put this down. Okay. And again, try, whoops, my gauze caught it when I went to move to this side. All right. So I'm just going to press that down. All right. And there is your triangle. So voila, you need eight of these. Okay. So, you know, grab a cup of tea, it's your favorite show on the TV, make your cuts and just start putting these together. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. And you need eight of them. Okay. So that is that part. Then we're going to put these together. So we need to make this into a um, triangle and this is the funny part because like <laughs> I totally like got super goofy with these but we need to make these into the triangles okay and we need to put these together okay so these are going to fit um let's see like so okay so they're going to make that square shape let's turn this around so it kind of looks like a square okay let me get this one here um, no, let's get this one because this one shows it better since I use the pattern paper to go over the joints. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to do is take two triangles and make them into two bigger triangles or four bigger triangles, I should say, just like this. Okay. So this is where the packing tape comes in. Um, so you're just going to get a piece of packing tape and you don't want to get it too wide because you don't want it to go over the sides of your um, triangle, okay? So um, you just want a piece, and you don't need that much. Um, this is probably, I don't know, let's see, maybe an inch and a quarter wide by, it's almost two inches um, wide as far as the tape goes. And get your, um, your scoreboard will help you with this because you can use it to square things up. So when you get your scoreboard, you can put your triangles down. You can use the sides of your scoreboard and you can try and make sure that everything is as lined up as absolutely possible and as straight as absolutely possible. Okay. So take your piece of tape and the easiest way to do this is put it on the one side. I'm going to turn this sideways because it's actually easier for me to do. 
And then I'm, let me make sure you can see this too. Yeah, you can. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. All right. So we're going to do this four times. So you're going to put that piece on the one side and then flip it back. You're going to line up your triangles nice and straight. Use the bottom or the edge of your scoreboard and then just flip that tape over and put it down. Okay. And that is your join. Okay. So we're going to do that. Then, um, let's see, let's do that again. Okay, so we're gonna make two bigger triangles. So you're gonna just take the sh two shorter sides of your triangle and you're gonna put them together. So I'm gonna take another piece of my packing tape. Oop, not that big. And I'm gonna find my scissors because I'm gonna cut that bad boy in half because I pulled out way too much. And I will use that in a minute. All right, so put your tape on the one side And I'm gonna flip that back, line the bottoms up, and then press that down. Now, if you do get a piece that's too wide and it hangs off the side, cut it off. You don't want it hanging off the side, okay? So again, let's, oops, grab that piece that I just cut in half. This will be covered up with patterned paper, so don't stress about that, but you do want to use this because you can't use if you use paper to make the join, like I did on this one with my first draft, over time, you're gonna get worn edges and it's gonna rip and it's gonna look terrible, okay? Um, and it, it won't last as long. This will last quite a while if you do it this way, okay? Um, it will hold up to the playing, it will hold up to the grandkids, um, and you won't be able to see it, really. You won't be able to see it. Um, last one here. Okay, flip that up, press those together, make sure they're lined up. Okay, just like that, okay? So once you get the four triangles done, then what you're gonna need to do is flip this guy over and we're gonna need to make squares, okay? Before we do that, it would be kind of easier if we just take all of these and you see where your triangles are joined here. If we flip this back like this, this is where the tape is. That's where that hinge is or that join is. We can put another piece of tape there and then um, that will kind of reinforce that join, okay? So I'm gonna just flip that around. And again, you can still use your um, scoreboard if you want to, make sure everything's nice and pressed together and then just put another piece of tape on that join, okay? So it's nice and sturdy. So let's do that real quick um, because I think that that's important. So just make sure you, you do put tape on the same, you know, join just on the other side of it, okay? So you still have, you know, your triangle shape, okay? So just flip that back, a little piece of your packing tape. Push this down and push it together. Put my tape on there. Last one. Push it down. All right. Last one, like so. Okay. So all of our triangles are done. So let's. Here's the join of our triangle. Turn those all upside down, okay? So join of the triangle, we want that on the bottom. Join of the triangle on the bottom and the join of the triangle right here on the bottom, okay? So we have kind of our open sides. So when you put your triangles together with those joins that we just did on the bottom, okay? And we put our, put our piece into configuration here we're going to need to connect the squares, okay? So we're connecting all of the corners. So I'm gonna take my tape, and of course it's messed up. All right, and I'm gonna press these together, okay? So we'll work with our first two pieces here. Make sure they're as lined up as I can possibly get. Now again, you can take your tape and you could put it on one side, flip it over, and then go ahead and line that up. Try and get it as square as possible. Use your scoreboard to help you. And then you 
connect the squares, okay? So now what we have is two triangles, see, connected at the corner on the opposite side at the squares, okay? Then what we're gonna do is turn it and do it again, okay? So now we gotta connect these two squares. So again, packing tape, flip it over, line it up as square as you possibly can get it. Remember, it's paper, nobody's perfect. If you have a wee bit of a gap, it's okay, all right? Turn it, connect these squares here. Oops, a little too much on that side, I think. Try and go half and half. All right, there we go. All right. Pressing them together, use your scoreboard. All right, and then one more time, last corner here. All right, packing tape, gotta love it, right? All right, so, squaring it up, trying to square it up, make sure that it's nice and straight, and voila. Okay, so now we're all connected on the square. So again, what we're gonna need to do is go through and put tape on the other joins. So if you take this with the square pieces attached, you see how those are all squares? and you turn it into a triangle by flipping up the one side, we're gonna need to put tape on this side. And you can kind of see where the packing tape is. We're gonna need to put tape on those two spots. So we'll grab another piece. And again, um, however you can get this nice and square and flush, and we'll put a piece there. Okay, right there. Then we'll put a piece here. And by now, so you don't even really need to have your scoreboard because you can use your hands, everything else is, is connected, okay? So then we'll fold that back and we're back to the square and then we're gonna need to do the opposite sides, okay? And then your piece is basically constructed and then it's just a matter of putting your pattern paper on. So that is the fun part is trying to decide which beautiful papers you're going to be using, right? Um, there we go. Okay, so here's our piece. So here's the front. So you have your triangle section that flips open. You get this beautiful pyramid shape. You can rotate it like so, goes either way and then you can open or close it back up and then you can open it this way. You can open it this way, all right? Flip it over and go ahead and fold it again and then you get this nice cube shape, okay? And this will also maneuver around so you can rotate your cubes, okay? Um, like so, all right? We'll put it back into, we'll open it back up and then it opens like this and like this. So I encourage you to go ahead and play with this now before you put your pattern papers on and just get a feel for it and see what it does. It's really, really cool. It's really, really cool. All right, so now it's just a matter of making your, um, putting your pattern paper on and making it your own. So um, like I said, I was, I'm using the gorgeous by the seaside let me show you this the gorgeous collection by the seaside by country craft creations has some great images and i was able to kind of really do some strategic cuts with this paper collection and get some really beautiful photos for this um for this paper so i've used this before it's a great collection and the colors are just absolutely amazing so i love it i love it so let's start with talking about the front. Okay, so the front, I'm calling the front the triangle pieces. So you see how we have the triangle pieces. So this is what I'm calling the front. Um, the front that I, I did for all of them was a, a single picture. And you need one piece that is five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. We're going to cut that into eight triangles, just like you did the triangles for 
the structure, okay? So again, you will have your paper and your trimmer and you're just going to cut it into triangles, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna line the points up, make my triangle, and then I'm gonna cut this into more triangles and that's all you have to do. So the paper is five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, all right? Just make your triangles. I did not, I'm not going to um, ink this because since <laughs> I've made so many of these and I've made, you know, this is now my second tutorial. I just really want to get this tutorial done before something else gets messed up. Ah, but you could totally ink it. Um, on the one that I um, did the first time, I inked the boxes um, before I put them together. So I, I inked all the edges and then I inked all the papers. And, you know, you certainly can do that. Um, it's quite all right. All right. All right. So we have our triangles. And then just remember that you need to make sure that they are in the proper orientation when you glue them down. So I'm going to real quick get these in the right order so that I don't goof them up, okay? Make sure that the picture makes sense, okay? So put them back together, keep them in order, and then I'm going to glue them on. When you glue them on, start with the one. We're gonna glue those right to the corners and to the edges. And then when we do that, they'll all meet as best they can on the inside cut pieces. And then they'll have a nice border of your, your frame around it, okay? So I'm just going to take my glue and put it on there and just make sure that you put them in the proper order all the way around. So I will put it down to the point, to the edges, match it as best as I possibly can, and then press that down. It'll go right over the tape. You are gonna have a little bit, I mean, cause human error, cutter error, whatever, you're gonna have a little bit of the structure showing it's okay. It's gonna be fine. When you get this done, it's going to be amazing and nobody will ever notice and say anything, I guarantee. I have showed this to so many people and everybody has freaked out. They thought it was the coolest thing ever. And honestly, I do too. And I cannot wait. I haven't, I keep, I haven't showed my grandkids this yet. They're gonna flip out when they see this. I just think they're gonna flip out. And I just think this would be cool if you used you know, like pattern paper and like if you had some beach pictures you could put in here and then when, you know, people start playing with it, it'll be great. So um, you can see how I'm gluing this down, you know, trying to get them to the inside, you know, inside corners as much as possible and then going around. Okay. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this and then finish it up and then I'll come back. Now, oh, one thing to remember, cause I just noticed that that happened. The glue squished out. Don't glue your triangles together, okay? Make sure that where they separate, where they're not joined, that they don't get glued together, okay? Very important. So take care to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll be back and we'll move on to the next squares that we need to cover, all right? Triangles are on. Doesn't that look cool so far? So far, so far? I just love it. I just love it. So on the front, what I'm calling the front insides, you will need four pieces that are two and seven eighths by four and one eighth. Now on the one I did with the baby um, papers, I did use, let me get it to the right side. I did use three by four cut apart. So you can see there's a little bit of more of a border around. It's okay. If you are using paper that, and you want to use the cut aparts, you know, it's fine. It's, it's going to be just fine. Um, but since I'm using pattern paper, that's why I'm cutting them at two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. You need four of these. And all you'll need to do is for all four of these is to cut them down the middle. So when you do that, it's going to be just a teeny tiny bit less than an inch and a half. So if you line up these, 
with the two and seven eighths at the top of your cutter right in between one and three eighths and one and a half. So you're gonna be a sixteenth shy of one and a half and cut that. You're gonna have two equal halves, okay? Like so. So you will need to do that to all four pieces, right in between one and three eighths and one and a half, okay? Keep your pictures together so you know which ones go with which ones. And then, um, so I did two pictures and then I did two that were kind of a background type of a picture. So you can do all four pictures, whatever you want. It just depends on what you're doing, what you're using. Just keep them in order so that you know which ones go with which one and you don't get frustrated like me sometimes. <laughs> and then you're going to go ahead and put them on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this. You're going to cover the insides here and the insides here. So I'm going to turn it like this. And for the first ones, I'll show you. Um, let me show you, I'll show you this one because I just love how this one turned out and I used pattern paper. So I'm doing it. Here's the front. I'm doing it so that the ghosts are going this direction and then the pumpkins are going the other opposite direction. So they're kind of, um, if you look at it, everybody is kind of, when you turn it to the triangle, they'll all be right side up. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay. So as you do this, so we're going to turn this here i'm going to put my crabs here like this but then my ladies are going to go kind of what would look like upside down okay but when we turn it into the pyramid shape they'll be right side up and then these guys same thing if they do have a direction in your pattern paper then you're going to um you know put those right side up so i'm just going to put my glue on my strips here And when I put this down, I just want to make sure that I've centered top and bottom and then I get as close to the join as I can. All right, like so, without going over and without getting glue on anything, okay? And then grab your other side, do the same thing. I sure hope you guys like this because I just think this is the coolest project and poor Ruth has been waiting for so long. I hope she loves it and I hope she loves making it. Okay. Now remember when you do this, just don't get crazy with the pressing, okay? Because you don't want to squish your triangles. You have to be gentle. Just try and be very careful when you glue those down. Okay, so my crabs are down. So then I'm just going to flip this around upside down. So that my crabs are upside down, I should say. And then I put my ladies here, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do that like so, okay? Now, um, I will do the rest of it off camera, but I do wanna show you what else I'm going to do on the other side. So I'll put her here so I know my other lady goes on the other side, right? Um, when you... So we, we've got these two we'll have done and then you turn and turn it the other direction and you do the same thing with your other pictures. Okay, so I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you that and then we'll go to the next step. So I have my little girl on the front and then I put the pictures here and here. Okay, we'll flip it back to the front and then we turn it the other direction and then you have your solid pieces there and here okay so that is basically done right now and then let's go to the back so let's flip it over now we have our square pieces those are the i'm calling the back piece and what we're going to do with this one is we're going to let me find the pieces that i need so i went through this paper collection had amazing border strips that have the beach scene like across each strip and so I was able to cut like what basically looks like four different pictures 
to put on my beach scene. And I just think it's absolutely adorable. So however you wanna lay your pictures out, I used four different ones. Now, you can use a whole five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths piece and then cut it into squares and then cut it into triangles. You can do that um, if you want to, but I used four different kind of pictures on each one. So the squares, you will need pattern paper that is, or pictures, that is uh, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Now, the one thing that you do have to be aware of is that the triangles go in different directions around the box. So make sure you have your pictures in whatever order you want, and then make sure you cut the triangles the proper way. So get your cutter wherever I hid it for myself. And for this upper corner, we're gonna need to go top left to bottom right. So, Line that up in your cutter, cut that diagonal, and then your picture will be proper. The next one has to go top right to bottom left, so just make sure you turn your picture and or pattern paper the proper way, okay? So just like that. This is the bottom one, so top left to bottom right. And I'm saying this and telling you this, I'm trying to really make sure you do that because I know from experience that you really have to pay attention to that. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is kind of a um, one of my Michelle proofing tips. Just make sure you cut your pictures in the right direction so you don't have to cut another picture. Yeah, okay. So again, then we're just gonna glue them down. So put your squares and triangles in the order that you want them, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and glue these down again the proper way, okay? So I'm put glue on the back of that triangle. I'm gonna get it as close to the joint as I can and I'm going to try and center this since each square is its own picture you know, so it has this nice little craft border all the way around, okay? All right, and then the second piece. Gosh, I love this paper. The beach is my absolute favorite place to go. I live in Oregon, and the Oregon coast is absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't ever gone, you need to go. It is gorgeous and beautiful and like just, I don't know. It is wonderful for my soul. You don't go to Oregon beaches to lay on the beach and get a suntan. That's for sure. You go to walk on the beach, to listen to the absolute roar of the ocean, to get wet because it rains a lot, but it is heaven on earth, I swear. All right, so I'm gonna do this all the way around and then I'm gonna come back and I'll show you how to do the inside pieces. Okay, outside back is done. Isn't that cute? I love the border strips in this collection. They are just adorable. So next thing is to do this piece and this piece. So when we do this, let me show you. We're gonna do it so our cats and our ghosts are right side up and then I have some pieces that are kind of non-directional that I'll put on the insides, okay? So again, I have kind of a directional picture that I'm gonna do here and here and then I'm going to do a non kind of directional thing here and here. Of course, it's all up to you, whatever you wanna do. Um, again, we're going to do the same thing um, with the sizing of the squares. They're gonna be two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And then you're going to need four of those. I've chosen two that are kind of photo uh, looking pictures, okay? And then I've chosen two that are uh, non-directional. You're going to cut those in half. And again, when you cut these in half, you're going to line it up right in between one and three eighths and one and a half. So it's a 16th shy of one and a half. And you're going to just cut them in half, okay? So we've got that one, right in between one and three eighths and one and a half. And that one, and then these two here, we'll do the same thing. 
All right. And there. Okay. So we have our pieces. Now, while we're doing this, I'm going to show you this and then I'll just get it all done and then I'll show you. So we're going to put these squares here and here. Okay. When you're done with that, you see how on the back side you're going to want to turn this into a triangle, right? So this is where we're going to turn this and you're going to have these two kind of longer sides. These two sides are going to be um, roughly six um, by three. So you're going to need two pieces of pattern paper or pictures that are two and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So I chose these papers right here and what I'm I'm doing this because then all four sides will have the same pattern paper. Um, so, but if you're using photos, of course, you know, that doesn't matter. And again, you're going to put these in your scoreboard. You're going to line this up between one and three eighths and one and a half again. Okay. So one sixteenth off and you're going to cut it and then you're going to need to cut these into quarters. So you're going to line this up at right before three inches so right in between two and seven eighths and three and then cut that okay so it's sixteenth less than three inches is what you're going to do and then you're going to have your four pieces that will let's see let's make sure that we get them in the right orientation because that is important right um and I didn't pay much attention to that, did I? <laughs> Let's see. How did I do that? Good gravy. How did I do that? Here we go. I got my tops and my bottoms all messed up, right? There's that. Okay. So, um, again, you know, it's a puzzle, right? <laughs> it's a puzzle. So, you're going to do that. And then when you're done covering these with the square ones, you're going to flip this triangle up and you're going to cover the two sides. Okay. And then that will be the end of patterning this particular cube. Okay. Now, the more you use this, it'll loosen up a little bit more. So you can see it's kind of a little bit tight when you put it together, but that's okay. It will loosen up as you play with it. So don't worry about that. And um, yeah, so I'm going to cover all of this with the pattern paper and um, the one thing that you need to do when you're doing these is line your pattern papers up to the inside edges so that you again have those nice borders around okay so I'll do that and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like and yeah give me a couple minutes and I'll be right back here's the back of our box then you have this flip open then you have this flip open Okay, then we have our triangles that go up and you have your beautiful pictures here. So our cube is done. So then you can go ahead and form it. Have your beautiful pictures there. This one will rotate so you can rotate them. You have your pictures here. Look at this. Is this not the coolest thing or what? I just love this. I just love this. I just love this. Here's your front. And then it goes into the photo cube or the pyramid here. Just gorgeous. This will rotate. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? So just play with it, kind of, you know, work it, um, get used to it. It's just an awesome thing. So the photo cube is basically done. So um, what we did when I broke was I did those and I did these. And then I flipped the triangle up and I did the photos on the outsides. And then what I was telling you about using the pattern paper on both sides is that when you do the cube like so, then you have the same kind of border all the way around. Okay. Um, so that is basically that. Now let's talk about the box to put it in. This is super simple to do. And I love this box. Um, style because you can do this without having to, um, you know, you can put pa pattern paper on it without having to um, go on the inside of the box. You can do it all while it's flat and then make the box. Okay. So for the box holder, you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is 10 and 3 eighths by 10 and 3 eighths. 
And then you will need some pattern paper. So you're going to need two pieces that are six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then you're going to need eight pieces um, that are seven eighths by six and a quarter. And that's gonna be to cover the sides, okay? So I've chosen my papers and we have our scoreboard. So let's put this here. Let's get our bone folder. And what you're gonna do is put it in. So it's 10 and 3 eighths by 10 and 3 eighths. You're gonna score at one and two and then rotate and score at one and two. You're gonna do this all the way around. Okay, one and two, one and two, all the way around, all four sides, okay? Then we're going to cut out some corners and make some tabs, which is super, super simple. So get your scissors once you get all of these done. What you're going to do is, if you can see this, there's four squares in the bottom. One square is gonna be a tab and the other three, the three outside squares are gonna be cut out. So however it's easier for you to do it, just cut straight up the sides because we wanna keep our sides of our box straight. So I'm trying to go on the other side of that score line as best I can. Kinda of didn't do that very well, but I'm gonna try to fix that just a wee bit. But I want that nice and straight, okay? Then you can go in, I'm gonna make this inner square my tab. So I'm just gonna go in at an angle and tab that out, okay? And I'm just gonna go to that score line and then these three squares are gonna cut out. So I'm just gonna turn it just so I can see. And I'm gonna cut those pieces out. And I can see, I didn't quite get that on that one side of the square, so I'm gonna trim that up. Okay, so each corner should look like this when you get done. Now, you can pinwheel it, meaning that we cut it this way, then we're gonna turn it and cut it again so that the tab is facing me, and just pinwheel it around. It doesn't really matter, whatever's easier for you. I tend to pinwheel mine um, because it's my habit, but you don't necessarily have to. You can have two going one direction and two going the other, it doesn't matter. Um, on smaller boxes, however, I think it does matter because then the tabs, if you pinwheel them, you'll have one on each side of the box side. And I think it does add a little bit of strength. But on this, because it's so long, I don't think it much matters. Um, but it's just my habit, like I said. So I'm just, like I said, pinwheeling it. So I'm just gonna go on around and I'm just, the other thing too is that um, you kind of get into a rhythm when you do it that way. You don't have to think, you know, which one's gonna be the tab, which one's not gonna be the tab um, kind of thing if you do them all the same way um, when you're using this method. So anyway, that's kind of my spiel on it. I know that there's, you know, a hundred ways to do everything. And it just is like what I tell people at work when I'm training them. You know, you gotta figure out what your pattern is, what your habit is, your routine, and then just go with it. And if it's different than somebody else's, as long as it gets a job done and it's done right in the end, you know, who cares how you did it, right? Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. All right. So I've got all of mine cut out. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to try to put those in the garbage, which I did not do. I threw those on the floor too. That's just great. <laughs> I hope you guys never see the floor after I'm done with the tutorial. Okay. So fold and burnish all of our score lines. So we're going to go around and do that. And then, like I said, this style of box you can put all the pattern paper on at once. How did I get that little rip? Um, that's okay, it's gonna go to the inside anyway. Um, you can put all the pattern paper on now and then make your box and then you're done. Like you don't have to try to, you know, put pattern paper in the box while the box is formed and try to get it on the sides and everything. It's um, a nice way to do it. And it also kind of reinforces the side because you end up getting a double layer on the sides of the box and it works out great. I mean, it just works out great. So I'm just going around folding, burnishing all of my score lines. All right. 
All right, so I think I got them all. In the first tutorial, I totally missed a bunch of them. All right, so this is the inside of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern paper on the inside of my box, okay? So that's what I want showing on the inside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I've cut the papers to six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'm just gonna lay that down and you're just going to cover the inside bottom only, all right? And then we're gonna flip it over and cover the entire outside, okay? Aren't they beautiful? Man, I love this paper. I do, I love this paper. I hope I always have it in stock and I never run out because it's just gorgeous. Okay, so outside of the box holder, I've got this and then I've got these pieces. Now, these are going to, the sides of your box are going to, when they fold up, you're gonna have the outside of your box and then this will fold over and be the inside of the box. So you have to be aware of how you're putting your pattern paper. So um, I've got the back, that's pretty easy. So I'm gonna put this down. On the back side. Okay, I'm just covering the bottom of my box. And I have been asked multiple times what I use for my glue wipes, and I use gauze. There's just uh, gauze like you would use for a dressing or a wound or a bandage or something like that. That's all I'm using. Um, they work great for me. They come in like a four by four size. They're great, and I just love them. So um, <laughs> that's, I wanted to just kind of throw that out there. Now, since I'm using this for the outside, um, I want to go ahead and use the same paper on the inside, and then I'm going to use this on the outside. So when I, when I say that, these strips are going to go on this, and then when this folds up, that'll be the kind of outside edge of the box, and then I'll have the words on the inside, okay? So when you do that, just make sure that when you lay these down, you lay them down properly all the way around. Okay, so I want this to be the outside. All right, so I'm just gonna put that on that first rectangle. And then this outer rectangle is gonna fold to the inside. So I'm just gonna lay that down. And like this one has that subway art on it, so the words kind of go um, in some places all over the place. So just kind of make sure you look at your direction. If you have directional paper, you wanna make sure that it's in the right orientation when you fold up your box, okay? Um, and then turn it and keep going, okay? So I'm gonna finish all the way around, then I'll be back and we'll put this together. And then I've got one more surprise and then we'll be done. Now that we have our box with our pattern paper on, this is the outside, so all of the sides, and then we have it on the inside. Then we just need to fold up our sides and glue our tabs. So we're gonna put glue on these little tabs that we created, okay? And then we're going to just attach those, and I'm gonna line up those edges and make sure we get a good stick, okay? And you can take your bone folder and kind of do that. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. So glue on my tab. And line it up and you can see, sometimes, I don't know if anybody's noticed this or not, but I kind of go like towards the inside and get a little glue on the edge of the one side that I didn't put glue on, just to kind of make sure that I have glue kind of like as close to the absolute edge as I possibly can. Um, that's just kind of a habit, and I don't know if I've ever explained that or not, um, but it's just a little maneuver that I do. Um, I don't know where I picked it up or if I just did it or what, but if you've ever seen me do that, that's what I'm doing. Because sometimes I don't get glue like right completely to the edge, but then if I take the unglued part here and kind of pop it down and get a little teeny tiny bit of glue on that edge and then put it there. And sometimes my box sides, like they just come flush a lot better. So that's just kind of one of the things I do. Okay, 
Last one. Pop that into the inside. I'm going to do that. Okay. Just kind of helps squish the glue to the side there. All right, then each side is going to kind of fold down over those tabs, cover them up and help secure them. So then we're just going to put glue on that outer one inch piece of the box. Okay, and then we're gonna just tuck that down inside. And then use your bone folder and kind of really press that down all the way around, okay? That'll cover up your box and your box edge is nice and papered and beautiful, okay? So then you just do that all the way around. And there it is. Hey! So I don't know what kind of weather you guys are having, but we're, we're at a warning for another bit of snow. And where I'm at, it's no joke because nobody knows how to deal with it and neither does our city. So... Tomorrow's commute is likely to be horrendous if it comes like they said. I have seen one report that said zero to three inches. I saw one that said up to eight, and it said in my area where I live, I'm going to get hit the hardest. So I'm super excited about seeing what happens tomorrow morning. Because <sighs> it could be bad. <laughs> and I'm hoping it's not. Because, you know, I need to go to work. I want to go to work. But I also don't want to wreck my car either. You know what I mean? And I swear, my town does not, they do not ever, 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 ever deal with snow so that everybody's safe. And it's crazy to me. It's just crazy because it happens every year. Every year. And it shuts down the town. Makes me nuts. All right. Last side box is done. So this is a nice little holder and a nice little display. So then you stick it in an easel and um, it keeps your box together, your your photo cue project together. So it doesn't kind of, you know, flip apart and all that stuff. So then you grab your project and it tucks nice and neat into that box and holds it together and beautiful, right? So then here is the, um, now remember what I said, this is kind of poking out. Um, you know, or separating. So the more you use it, the more you play with it, the easier it's going to get and the more flush it's going to sit. Because you can see, like for this one here, you know, it sits nice and together. So I just haven't played with that one as much. Um, so then what I did, and this is kind of a bonus thing, and I didn't cut the papers to show you, but I'm going to talk you through it. So then I decided that it needed a little bit more because I talked about like you could tie a pretty ribbon around this, which would be absolutely adorable. Um, you could, um, where did my ribbon go? You know, do the belly band thing around the edges like I did on that one, and that would be great. But then I thought, you know what? What if I did a paper belly band around the box and around the project, and then that would be a great way to store it as well. So if you wanted to give it as a gift, I mean, wouldn't that be gorgeous? So I made this belly band. So this belly band came from scraps that I had. Um, really super simple to make. So I took two pieces of cardstock and I used the craft. They were three by 10 inches. And I, I took the two. So if you look at this, it's made with two pieces of the cardstock. So it's the 10 inches is the front with the sides and then another piece that is the sides with the back. So they're basically joined both pieces at the sides. So on the 10 inch side, I scored at one and three quarters and at eight and a quarter. And then I folded those two. I did that to both of them. And then I just put them together and joined them at the side. So they're double thickness cardstock on both sides. And that's it. And then um, I had some of the beautiful coffee brown um, felt pattern pa or uh, cardstock from Country Craft Creations. I had some scraps, so I just cut those out. And then this is more of that beautiful border paper that I used on the back of this box. And I had some left, so I used that 
on the back and the front, and then I used more of my pretty ladies on the sides, okay? And just decorate it. And then I went and took one of the cut aparts, put that on some brown coffee felt. I popped it up with some foam dots. And then I added some flowers and some little seashell buttons and things from my stash here and then here and then a couple little uh, pearls. And isn't that gorgeous? I love it. I just love how that turned out. And then the whole thing, the box and the cube fit right inside. If I can get my fingers to work. And slip right over and then voila you have a really pretty presentation too that will help also with storage so um there is my other options so i guess it's a good thing that i went ahead and had to redo it because i didn't think of that until i was completing prepping for this tutorial and then i thought oh now that could be fun to do so um yeah so there's your options you can use the ribbon like i did here you can just use a single box like I did there and here, or you can do the box and a beautiful belly band to wrap around it. And what a great presentation. So I'm hoping, hope, 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 hope that when I check this video, it all worked out because this is the fourth time I've made one of these things. <laughs> a second tutorial and I'm hoping it worked, but I hope you liked it. Please let me know what you think. Please let me know if you do it. And um, I'd love to see pictures. If you're on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, you can totally post pictures and show me what you did with it. Ruth, thank you so much for asking me if I could figure it out because this was a really fun project. And I am super excited about it. I hope you are too. Can't wait for my grandkids to see it because they're gonna just freak out. And um, yeah, so thank you. Read the information in the description. I'll have a cut guide. It's not very extensive. It's pretty simple um, for this project and other information. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and I will see you again soon with more fun things. So stay, stay crafty. <laughs> and I think I'm going to go take a nap now. <laughs> thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye-bye.